Hey guys, welcome back to What's Up Universe. Per usual, I'm sitting here with my blonde friend. It's MK. Hey, MK. Hey. And we have a very special guest today. And the reason why this guest is very important to me is that I am a licensed associate professional counselor. I specialize in addictions and I'm also a CADC. So this guest means so much to me because it's so important that people are sharing their stories in the recovery community and feeling empowered to do so. This is Bruce Brackett. Bruce is a Pennsylvania-based certified motivational speaker, an advocate of recovery from trauma, mental health, and addiction diseases, and a portrait artist. Bruce, we're so happy to meet you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself to begin? What's up, universe? Hi. I'm so excited to be here, Jen and MK. It's so lovely to meet you. Thank you so much. I'm one of many. I'm human and I make many mistakes as I go through life and I've made many of them and I try and learn the best to my ability to overcome and keep moving forward. You nailed it. I am a certified motivational speaker. I am an advocate of recovery across all genres, if you will, of recovery as a survivor of uh, someone who is going through and has gone through trauma, abuse, mental health and addiction diseases. Now that I'm kind of on this side of things in recovery, it I really find it's one of my responsibilities to go back to the flames and dump buckets of water on those who are left behind and help them find their way out because we can't keep what we have if we don't give it away. So, um, I find that really important through recovery. You know, I can't do this alone. So the more that I have people who are like-minded going through the similar situation, the stronger we are as a community to be able to move forward and pass that. Um, Originally, I'm from Montana and I moved to New York City when I was 18 years old uh, to pursue my dreams of being on Broadway and I got pretty close and you know got distracted with drugs and alcohol and whatnot and kind of gave up on that dream and right before uh, the pandemic happened my now fiance and I we moved out to the Poconos here in Pennsylvania and we've been here ever since. If you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about your recovery journey just to start as much as you feel comfortable with. Sure. It really goes back to the beginning of my life. I was born into detox from drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So from the very get-go, the odds were stacked against me. And for a long time, I really used that as an excuse to view myself as not worthy or not good enough. And, you know, this is where it started. So this is just who I'm going to be. And I was really fortunate enough through being removed from my birth home, going through foster care and being placed in the utmost, like the perfect condition, literally going from hell to heaven. With my adoptive parents, they gave me everything and immediately was placed into trauma therapy when I was four years old and had that counseling, the love, the support and everything to really really oh my goodness they're saints like they (laughs) they really provided everything for me to be able to counteract that and it took years years and years and years of therapy for me to even start to see that I was worthy of something greater and that I'm not a crap kid yeah my journey began with uh, detox being born and I didn't introduce myself or reintroduce myself to drugs and alcohol until I was 16 years old in Montana you know, the occasional sneaking out of my bedroom window, going hanging out with the high schoolers and having like one or two Mike's Hard Lemonade thought I was like real cool type of a thing. And that didn't last very long because I wasn't into it. I just I didn't jam with that. And it wasn't until I was 16 and a half that I started to really mentally disassociate. And I went down a really dark road and I ran away from home. And during that summer of 2007, when I ran away from home, I I city hopped and I went all over the country. And Chicago was where I really got into trouble. And my first drug was crystal meth. And I went hard with that. So it was a dark time and I met the wrong people. I was in the wrong place and the wrong mindset and just didn't care about anything. So I said yes to the wrong things. And it really drug that (laughs) drug, lack of a better term, to reintroduce me to my addictions. And that was a really rough summer, (laughs) for sure. And 
afterwards, once I had enough of that, I ended up, because when I ran away, I actually ran away twice. The first time was only for like a few days. And then I came home because I stole money to run, aw to run away. I was put on probation when I came home and I was only home for like two, two days. And I remember having a conversation with my dad in the garage where his workshop was. And I just, I told him, I was like, I'm not done. I am not done. I you like, you need to lock me up in a room and <laughs> like, cause mm -hmm. there's so much more that I'm going to do. And uh, unfortunately I didn't give them the chance to help me cause I ran away again very soon. And then that's when I went to Chicago, Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and um, was gone for a, a, a good chunk of time. I think like over a month I was missing and a lot happened during that month. You know, a lot of sexual abuse, a lot of drug use, and a lot for a 16 year old to go through. So when that concluded and I turned myself in, and because I ran away while I was on probation, of course, when I came home, I was arrested immediately in the airport when my when I got back and was sent through juvenile detention center. And from there, went to a group home afterwards for seven months. And my parents were like, you need a lot more discipline, clearly, than what we were able to give you. So we're going to enroll you in a dance program. And me being theatrical and everything, I was like, all right, well, I, OK, let's do this. And turned out I loved it and that really sparked the dream for me to be on Broadway so I sobered up and by the grace of God got me through high school and I graduated and at 18 that's when I moved to New York and I was really um, focused and driven for the first year year and a half of being in New York City I was taking dance classes a lot auditioning all the time I got a few like gigs being a backup dancer and whatnot. Um, and the constant rejection, I just, I gave up and I couldn't handle it. So I was like, where else can I perform? Oh, clubs, I can be a go-go dancer. That's dancing. Okay, well, red flag, I have no business being in the nightlife. Um, and I, I quickly reintroduced myself to partying and drugs and alcohol, so. That took up a huge chunk of my time being in New York. You've been sober now from hard drugs for nine years. Yes. Yeah. June 13th will be nine years. And what made you want to take this to a public platform? That's a really good question. I, th I really think that when I realized that I had had enough with hardcore drugs, I, I just... Truthfully, I remembered all of the pep assemblies that we would have in high school, you know, uh, advocates coming and don't do drugs type of a situation. And I always I really loved those programs. And I was like, oh, maybe one day I could do something like that. You know, that is kind of what sparked that idea for me. But I never like when yesterday actually was my two year anniversary of being on TikTok and I never would have gotten on TikTok if it wasn't for my fiance, Tad. And he just said to me one day, this is about 11 months into the pandemic, like, you should really post your time lapse videos of you painting on TikTok. And I was like, why, why, why would I do that? I already have Instagram. I only had like 400 followers then at the time, which 400 people, that's technically an off-Broadway theater. That's kind of a lot of people. Um, and I was like, okay, whatever. Like, uh, I guess I'll try it. And it was a similar outcome to what I was seeing with Instagram. And I was like, okay, well, I guess this is double exposure. Great. I'm going to continue this. And then I did the first few videos were of me painting. And then I added some words over the videos of like, this is why I'm doing it. And I had a lot to tie into mental health and art therapy for me and how this is healing me. And I noticed that the views and the engagement were increasing from that. And I was like, okay, maybe then I should actually put myself in front of the camera as me and start sharing my story. Cause I guess this is, this is the opportunity, might as well do it. And I did, and it absolutely exploded. That's an well, understatement. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it really did. You know, I'm uh, over half a million 
uh, followers in in two years says a lot, I guess. <laughs> I think your story is incredible because for our listeners who might not know enough about mental health disorders or uh, addiction diseases, your story is very common coming from a trauma-based background that you you fell into this lifestyle because you were trying to escape from the pain and it took you a couple tries to get there, to get to the nine years of sobriety, which congratulations to you. It's a big deal to have nine days of sobriety, much less nine years. So I love that you took that addiction model and came back around to this redemption model where you're now pouring back into other people and supporting them in their wellness journeys, both mental health and addiction. And I assume that for you, this is very healing for you to be able to pour into other people via social media. It is. It's healing. It's uh, reminding me of where I began. Every day I'm reminded where I was to where I'm at now. Um, and I do want to I do want to clarify, I have been sober from hardcore drugs for almost nine years, but I am 100 not but I am sober from alcohol, weed and cigarettes for 115 days. Yay. So it's all a journey. You know, uh, before I relapsed with alcohol, I had a year and a half sober and I have tried and tried and tried many, many, many times to become sober with many relapses. You know, I'm not show up once I got this and never had the urge again. That's not my journey. I have had many relapses, but to focus on my mental health, I'm bipolar one um, with several other diagnosed disorders and i i you know like i said it's a reminder of where i was and a reminder of why i'm doing this because even even with so many eyes on me now i can still feel so alone and i really have to remind myself that's impossible there's eight billion people on this planet chances are there's over <laughs> well over hundreds of millions of people who can identify through this if not for themselves but they know someone who is going through this once it really kind of sunk in that what's happening on social media with me is real and i started to see the flood of emails and messages come through of people who identify the same way have gone through the same thing have recovered themselves, have decades of sobriety, and they share their story with me or for the person who uh, comes in and they only have one day of sobriety and it's inspired them, it's a gift and I would not trade it for anything. Yeah, and relapse is such a common part of sobriety and the recovery journey. Can mm. you fill us in a little bit, Bruce, about what you do to stay well, whether it's uh, therapy, groups, medication, what is it that helps you stay well? All of the above. Uh, yeah, I attend 12-step programs every single day. If I can't get to one in person, I attend them over Zoom because it's limitless. Literally, mm -hmm. I, here in Pennsylvania, at any time of the day, could attend a Zoom meeting in San Francisco or in Zurich, Switzerland, if I wanted to, you know, so we can attend these. There's help. There's so much help out there. And so I do, I do 12 step programs every single day. I have a active sponsor that I work with and I call every single day. And I currently right now, I have been in therapy the majority of my life. Right now I do not have a therapist, but I actually, I've made a few contacts and looking for one because the process of transferring everything from New York City to Pennsylvania has taken me a long time. Yeah. I finally have, now I'm officially a Pennsylvanian and now everything is here. So I'm following and connecting the dots with that to find a therapist again. I think that therapy is not only for the sick and suffering, it's for everyone. Absolutely. It's for everyone, you know, successful or struggling. It, it really is. I am finally on back on my bipolar medication. I was off of that for over a decade and I was replacing that and self-medicating with weed, mm -hmm. um, thinking that that was working. And I think in some degrees, yeah, I think it really did help. I'm also, uh, really quick, I'm not an advocate to say don't do drugs, don't do alcohol, because there are so many people who don't have a problem with it, like I do. So... 
if it's not a problem for you, congratulations. If it is a problem for you and you're aware of that, congratulations. You're aware that that's a problem and we can only move forward from there. So with that being said, with uh, marijuana in particular, I, I do think that there are benefits to it if you are, you know, take as doctor prescribes type of a thing. So if you're abusing it in other ways, then that's something that we need to look at. For myself, I thought that it was working and then come to find out mm, maybe it wasn't. Uh, not maybe. No, it definitely wasn't. So, you know, I was using it as an excuse to keep escaping from my mood swings, from pain, from grief, from all of the things that we tend to run from and numb from. And that's one of the things that I was using. Uh, but now I'm back on my bipolar medication. I take Lamictal. Um, mm-hmm. Lamotrigine, I believe is its actual name. Yes. And I started that during this last relapse from alcohol when I was arrested and got a DUI and went to a psychiatric hospital and then followed that with rehab. When I was in the hospital, I was like, put me back on my medication. This isn't working anymore. This is just not working. I'm clearly not doing what needs to be done. So let's fix this. And I got back on my medication. And so far, you know, 115 days later, I am still struggling, of course, but so much better than where I was at 115 days ago. (laughs) So I'm really grateful for that. And by using my support system, you know, my, my close friends that truly are there for me, that want my better interests to succeed, those friends will show you who they are. And I'm very fortunate to have a handful of people in my close safety net that I use and call when I'm not okay. And since I got a sponsor, God bless her, uh, she receives the majority of my phone calls. (laughs) So, which is great. And you know, my my fiance is absolutely incredible. So I, I make sure that I don't go through this alone. Yeah, and your story is so important because it shows that there's not just one way to recovery, that it often takes several different steps to get back onto the path that you need to be on. And I love, Bruce, that you just brought up the contention with weed because that's such a hot topic in the recovery community and um, Delta Aid and using Kratom and and people having different opinions on uh, trying to self-medicate. Is it still a pathway to addiction? Should I be totally sober from all chemicals? So I'm really glad that you brought that conversation up and and gave your opinion on that because it is such a contentious subject and I'm sure that you've gotten some some flack for it or you've gotten into arguments before over it. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I always just go back to not everything is for everyone and not everyone is for everyone. So literally to each their own, but be honest with yourself. Is it actually working for you or is it creating a problem? If there, if it's creating a problem, chances are it's a problem. I love that. And last little bit of psycho ed for our listeners. There is evidence tying marijuana use to an increase in your symptoms with uh, major mental health disorders. So for bipolar disorder and for major depressive disorder, there's actually uh, significant evidence that it can actually worsen your symptoms. Just absolutely absolutely and i was so naive to that fact because even with alcohol and weed they are depressants if yeah. you were a depressed person you really have to be careful with that because you know it might feel in the moment oh it's better this feels good well it does it though at the end of the day with all of the other issues that it can bring up that's just a way of escaping from what is actually going on. And for me, I'll speak for myself, I will never recover if I don't address the core issues. I have to get to the core, I have to get to the root of the problem and fix that because putting something in place to cover that up is just brushing all of the truth under the rug. And that's the stuff that we need to get to to fix it. Back to your wellness journey, how does your artwork play into this? It is definitely therapy for me. I I look over here because I have this painting that I just did of this panda, which is, you know, it's fun. Um, And just, it's happy. And I 
don't always create something that is so happy because sometimes I'm not and I need to get what I'm feeling out and it might come out as a darker image, but that's honestly how I'm feeling. So for some people it's journaling, for some people it's talking to someone else. And for the majority of the time for me, it's creating something and getting it out in forms of expression, whether it's uh, through performance, singing, art, um, so art for me has been absolutely a foundation throughout my entire life. A uh, quick little story. When I was removed from my birth home and ended up in uh, my adoptive home, which that in itself is a book, um, but we were very fortunate. We were kept together. We were briefly put through the foster care system and that is really unheard of for that industry if you will and when we ended up with my adoptive parents they they saw that we all needed so much help that they placed us into therapy right away gave us all of the counseling that we needed but they also got rid of their dining room and replaced it with an arts and crafts room so from the very beginning of my upbringing, we had that opportunity of expression and uh, our, the dining table was just loaded with paints, uh, clays, different types of um, mediums to use, you know, to create and get that expressive need out. And when we were younger, we were um, always creating and prepping for the summer county fair and we would mm -hmm. submit our art projects to the county fair and we would always come home with blue ribbons because we spent so much time practicing this so from a very young age art came into play for me and all through high school you know I took advanced art classes and fast forward you know in New York I kind of put it down and I was expressing myself through performance art and everything but when I started to become sober from hardcore drugs um, and I, I put myself in an outpatient rehab program, the Addi Addiction Institute of New York, I started painting again and I used that as a tool. So now I am constantly creating and if I am not creating, I know that that's a red flag. I'm getting off my path and I'm not doing what I need to do. So typically art is art therapy for me and definitely one of the tools that is helping to save my life. You recently said that you're taking a break from social media. Yes. What are you doing to fill your time? Are you focusing on your art? What are you doing to decompress? I am. Um, and I would also like to normalize taking a break from social media because it is, you know, uh, my goodness, that's a whole topic in itself. But we are so busy comparing ourselves to other people's journeys. It's so unhealthy. Um, so for me, I, especially after this last week and a half, my Instagram account exploded. And the influx of all of these different energies and emails and messages of everyone's real life issues. I'm so grateful that they were able to type it out and get it out and everything, but I can't fix it for mm -hmm. them. That's something that they're gonna have to do for themselves. And I'm an empath, so I have to be really careful what it is that I read online, what it is that I, I take in. And I noticed I was taking in too much. So I, I took that as a sign and I was like, okay, I love you all. Thank you for joining, but I'm gonna take a break now. and. In just the last few days, I finished three paintings. Um, you know, as a portrait artist here, I'll show you uh, one here that I just recently finished. Oh. Oh. Of this brother and sister, unfortunately, you know, t talking about uh, mental health issues, um, he is no longer with us. So this is a memorial portrait. Um, and she commissioned this piece to have and um, I get a lot of memorial requests and whatnot. Um, this is my first same-sex wedding portrait that I did. So I was able to finish this. I always paint my subjects in black and white. 
um, because it's a it's more of a political statement um, since there's so much racism that's going on in our world that has always been there. I just said, F it. None of you get skin color, <laughs> like you know, and until we can all get on the same page that we are all human and we all have a purpose in life of being here and to look beyond what just might be the pigment of our skin that's my political statement in there no one no one gets pigment in their skin so um that's what i do there i have over which i'm almost finished with my uh, partner and i yesterday and over the last few days actually have been making cups of love in the beginning of my videos i always introduce like here's a cup of love drink up and joy it's all for you and speaking of, here's a cup of love. Cheers. <laughs> we were prepared. Yes, yes we were. Cup of love. I know how much you care about social justice and, and you you place such a value on, on what's going on in the world and, and being involved. And correct me if I'm saying this incorrectly, but I was looking into Almonia Souls and Harmony. Oh, amazing. Yes. Tell me more about that. Uh, um, um, Almonia is actually how it's pronounced. Um, and that means souls in harmony so um it is a beautiful nonprofit organization that my dear friends and i mean like my support system these are my support um supportive people uh by francis azucena and kathleen atkins have founded this really amazing all-inclusive queer community. So I say all-inclusive because it's not specifically just for the queer community. It's for everyone who either has been pushed away or shunned away from religion, uh, which is very much a part of my story as well. And it is just a really great group that meets once a month, the last Monday of every month, and we come together collectively uh, to have what I guess you would call a service. Um, and it's led through intention, meditation, breathing work. Um, there's a free expression where someone on the panelists can really do whatever they want, have a free expression. I've gone on there and I've, I've done motivational speaking. I painted. Um, I've shared poetry, you know, things that really connect with me through my recovery journey. And we've had a, just a plethora of other uh, different things that have come through the free expression, the meditation. There's a segment for music. So there's always a portion where we have live music and they're based in New York City. And so anyone can attend. It's we do this over Zoom. And sometimes we do in-person gatherings, but we still have it over Zoom because there are people in Montana, South Dakota, Alabama that attend, um, in Texas, in California. And it is such a beautiful, beautiful community. Uh, they just passed a year, I believe. Yeah, they just passed a year of doing this. And it's, you know, it's slow but sure. And they're... I'm trying to push them as much as possible and get more eyes and attention on them because I too have really struggled with with religion and from a very young age my parents when they adopted us they were people who went to church and um there's always that portion I don't know what it what it is that they do but the, like the kids always go off to like the daycare and they continue the services and whatnot and during that time, you know, that's like free time for the kids, you know, there's activities and whatnot, daycare, just have fun. And I would always just go straight to this trunk that had all of these really cool outfits in there for the boys and the girls. And of course, I would put on the prettiest dress that would twirl out because I would love to spin in a dress. And that became a really big issue in the church. And um, my parents were like, okay, we're out. You're not gonna tell my boy that, you know, he's wrong for wanting to put on a dress and uh, he's five, let him do what he wants to do, you know, like whatever. So from that experience, um, 
we pulled away from the church. There was a few other things that happened with actual abuse, uh, sexual assault and everything through the church community. So after all of that came into play, my parents were like, we're good. <laughs> we're out. We don't need this anymore. And because of that, I've always really pushed religion away. And now I'm finding that I, I, I wouldn't say I'm religious, but I'm definitely spiritual and a huge believer in energy and the universe. What's up, universe? Like, yeah, I definitely connect now through that. So Almonia Souls in Harmony provides that space for mm -hmm. people who don't necessarily have that anymore. So we don't consider it a church, but it, it for lack of a better term, it's basically a, a newfound church. Yeah, and unfortunately, spiritual abuse and church abuse specifically is all too real and all too common. And you it's would know rampant. coming out of that. It yeah. is rampant and it is it's disgusting and it's sad uh, and, and deeply hurtful to people leaving these scars on them. And, and additionally, uh, five-year-old boys dressing up is very normal uh, and, and very common for their age group. I'm, I'm so sorry that you went through that. How do you now connect with your higher power? What What helps bring that out in you? I've had a lot of spiritual aw awakenings throughout my life and uh, some pretty loud ones recently that I am aware now more than ever in my life that there's something greater than me. There's something bigger than all of us. And, you know, whether you want to say that's Jesus or God or Allah or Buddha or whatever higher power is that you turn to, for me, it's the universe and it's uh, energies. I can't be naive to those spiritual awakenings anymore. You know, from the very beginning of my life, we went through severe trauma. Um, we were one of the worst abuse cases that Montana saw in the early 1990s. To go from that to literally the best home to raise us, that's that's a gift. That's something from the higher powers, you know, that didn't happen as a fluke. And surviving running away, surviving all of my overdoses, surviving suicide attempts, surviving everything that has been thrown my way or things that I have put on myself, that's something greater than me. And with this last one, I when I was arrested and got the DUI, I was not driving that car there was something greater than me driving that car because I was driving in a blackout for two hours. There's no way that I was driving that car. There was, you know, angels, whatever, protecting me. And um, when I went to go get my car out of the impound lot, there my car was, all intact, ready to go, just perfectly unscathed and everything parked right next to a car that was completely crushed and totaled. You couldn't even identify what type of a car it was other than it still had its little Honda logo on the back of it. And I mean, like, the entire roof of this car was gone. Just gone, crushed. And it happened to be right next to my car. Okay, I hear you. I, like, I, I totally hear you. And that was a huge wake-up call. Like, you know, not only thank you for protecting me and not killing anyone while I did that, you know, because that could have gone in so many different directions. Yeah, if I'm not going to pay attention to the signs when they present themselves, you know, I'm missing the point of what it is that I'm doing here. Um, so it really was a, a huge wake up call that there is something a lot greater than me. And then, you know, to each their own, I, I go to 12 step programs. And for some, some of them are very, uh, heavy with God and religion and whatnot. And um, that's why I always say not everything is for everyone and not everyone is for everyone. So take what you resonate with, take what works for you and leave the rest. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But going and being in a community that acknowledges a presence or a power greater than ourselves really helps to connect, to connect me with that as well. It's so important to have community, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually am so thankful for you because 
I've gone through stuff. We all have. We're human. And there are mornings where I look for your page and just need to hear you talk. And I, I do feel like you're talking to me and you help me get through my day. So I just want to thank you for that. And I just want to see too, are there others that you turn to on social media? Are there people that inspire you and help you get through your day? Yeah, thank you for that. That means a lot to me. Um, again, that makes me realize that I'm not alone going through this. So, you know, this is a very, very much a two-way street here. It's not me just showing up and being like, look at me presenting all of this positivity. It has nothing to do with that. Because uh, one thing that people always say to me is, I really hope that you're giving yourself that love that you give to us. Yes. And I, I just want to let you know, I watch my videos too. <laughs> I do. I think all of us do. I think that's very normal for us to go back and watch what we have put out there. But I, I really try, one of my guidelines, is this something I want to see in the world? Is this something that I think belongs in the world? If it's not, I don't post it. And there are there are people that I, I turn to for inspiration. Uh, the cute lesbian on TikTok is absolutely incredible. ASMR videos, which is not for everyone, but it is for a lot of people, you know, it helps to calm me down. And connecting again with the people in my inner circle really, really help. But yeah, there's there's a few right now. I'm, I, I should have written them down, but there are a few people on TikTok that I do turn to that inspire me. And whether it is specifically for inspiration or just to get a laugh, just to like get out of my way. I need something funny. Let me turn to this. Oh, I'm forgetting her last name. She's a comedian, Jessica. Uh, she's a Jewish comedian and she's just so, so I'm going to have to look her up really quick. And another one, Tony Talks on Instagram and TikTok is absolutely hilarious. Uh, a good friend of mine, Schwa, uh, Schwa de Vive, who was a Broadway performer and a drag queen and also now is on social media. Uh, Schwa Works, I believe, is their social handle. Hilarious. So good. Jessica Kirson, K-I-R-S-O-N. Absolutely hilarious. Her handle, Jesse, J-E-S-S-Y, Kirson, K-I-R-S-O-N for comedy relief and just to get me out of my negative thinking, you know, and I do a lot of the time, if it's something that's negative that comes up on my FYP or just on my feed on Instagram, I block it immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for it. I, I, I don't take it on. That's why my negativity be gone. Slogan is what it is because I, I have spent so much time stuck in that mindset that that's, I believe in the universe. I believe of laws of attraction. You stay in a negative mindset, you will receive negativity. You know, change a thought, move a muscle, change it. So look at something, look for the silver lining, look for positivity, look for laughter, and then that's what comes back to me. So clearly I'm living proof of that. I started putting out all of these positive messages and my story through, even though a lot of it's really dark, I shed the light of the positivity through that. And within two years, I now on both platforms, I almost have a million followers. Like it's, it's absolutely insane what has happened. Um, and I'm very grateful and even more so humbled by this experience. Um, but Again, that shows me the laws of attraction works. So I put out all of this positivity and it's come back tenfold and beyond. Yeah, you're a motivational speaker and obviously you're getting the chance to do that on your platform. What other opportunities do you get that pop up to go and speak in person? What stands out? I've spoken a few times at 12-step programs and mm -hmm. I've qualified and I've shared my experience there. I've spoken to uh, organizations in Arizona over Zoom for troubled youth. And there's another woman that I'm actually working with right now to get this lined up, but speaking to a rehab 
And so far right now, because I've, I've, I've not publicly had a legit in-person uh, motivational uh, speaking engagement as of yet, because I'm still working on my material. I was certified not that long ago. I'm, I'm looking up because I'm looking at the, the certificate that I have on my wall. And so I'm in the very beginnings of building that career for myself. And I am so excited to see where it goes because I've already had a lot of people encouraging me to go down that, that road and to follow that dream. So now currently, as we speak, I'm literally typing up all of my different subjects, my speeches, my overall speech, and I'm currently working on my book, which is entitled My One Way U-Turn. And I'm excited for that to come through and to be completed. And that in itself is just a personal memoir of basically my journey through life and as I'm fine, you know, like we always get to a milestone. We always get to a point in our life where we're like, okay, I think that, I think that's it. I think that's all it, all of my eggs in one basket and yeah. I'm ready to write this. And then, oh my goodness. Like I haven't even put the experience of social media in this book yet. And that's a whole two years of life that have just changed my life for the better. So I'm just writing it all out and getting it uh, finalized. I officially got my trademark for Negativity Be Gone. I own that. So getting everything underway and making sure that branding and everything is legit. I'm doing this all by myself. I don't have a team that is helping me. So uh, I'm learning as I go and it's it's quite the experience. But that being said, you don't have to know anything. Just start. Yep. Just start, get out of your own way, show up, put pencil to paper and, you know, st start getting it out, do the research. And it's amazing what will come and what happens. We had a production designer on our podcast, probably one of our first few guests, MK, Aziz Louise. And I, she made a comment at the end, something about being surprised that my editing turnaround at the time was really quick. And I said something to her along the lines of like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> it's not like I'm really editing. I'm just like figuring it out. And she's like, well, isn't that what we're all doing? Like, it doesn't matter what you do or who you are. We're all just kind of figuring it out as we go. And that's what you're saying. You just decided to, hey, I'm just going to do it and yep. figure out how to put a book out there and how to put your, your catchphrase on some stuff. And I hope we get some merch eventually. Yeah. Oh, I, and I will totally send you guys something. So don't worry about that. We would love that because I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, man, when your book comes out, we would love to know about it. Cause I know I can speak for MK and myself. We would a love to read it and b love to put it on our platform to advertise to people. Oh, thank you. You mean so much to me personally, just because I wish I could take you and put you in all of my therapy sessions to talk to my clients because you're exactly who they need to hear from. And if you don't mind as an ending, we would love to toast you with our cups of love to your sobriety because it is a huge deal. So name for us again, how many uh, days sober and how many years sober off your substances? So starting with all hardcore drugs, beginning with crystal meth, crack, cocaine, molly mdma ketamine and a plethora of other drugs uh june 13th of 2014 will be uh the marker of nine years so this coming june will be nine years sober from all hardcore drugs and october 12th of 2022 marked the last day of drinking smoking and smoking weed so 115 days sober amazing here's to you bruce cheers thank you Cups of love all around. It's Bruce, all for you. you. Yeah. Drink up, enjoy. It's all for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And negativity. Be gone. Be gone. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on What's Up Universe. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate your positive message for our listeners. And I am sure we will be uh, staying in tune with you to see what you have next. Absolutely. And actually, before we go, if you don't mind... I would like to, as this is Black History Month, um, I would like to just quickly give a little bit, not really trivia, but just facts. Sure. Um, first off, I am coming from Pennsylvania, which is the land of the original people, the indigenous people of the land of the Lenape. I encourage everyone to go and look up what land we are residing on. 
And um, as for Black History Month, fun little fact, the gear shift and the turn signal was invented by Richard B. Spikes. Vermont was the first colony to ban slavery in 1977, or I'm sorry, in 1777. The three light traffic signal was invented by Garrett Morgan in 1923, which really shocked me. Refrigerator trucks that provide all of our food uh, through delivery uh, was invented by Frederick McKinley Jones in 1940 and Sarah Boone improved the ironing board in 1892 and she improved it by making it collapsible. So I just wanted to throw that out and to encourage everyone to go do their research of people who are different from them. Thank you so much, Bruce. You really follow through on your message of love to others. Thank you so much, Bruce, for joining us. We appreciate your presence so much in this world. We're so glad that you're still here because that was not a guarantee multiple times in your life. Yeah, it, and- it really wasn't. And thank you so much, Jen and MK and What's Up Universe for having me be a part of your universe. This has been a real pleasure. Absolutely. Stay tuned for more content from What's Up Universe. Bye, guys. <laughs>